Kia ora friends, welcome back to my studio. Merry Christmas, I'm Gina and in today's video I'm going to be making a Christmas scene. To begin with I'm going to start laying out a bit of a design. So I've got a tree currently made and I'll whip through how I've created that. So we've got our little tree created and I'm going to use this golden picture frame as the outside of it. I want to create an exterior theme as if somebody's looking through the window into a room. The reason why I'm doing that is because I've got two days to pull this together. So first off let's have a look at a bit of a design. I want to have a door and a wreath in there as well and then looking through the window to the Christmas tree. So that's the plan. So let's not waste any more time and let's get started. Okay so first off let's make the tree. I got this one from a local hobby store here in New Zealand, it's called Spotlight, and I had these string lights already. So what I'm going to do first is just start wrapping the lights around the tree. Um, these are actually really, really long, so I've actually wrapped them around a couple of times. I go all the way to the bottom, back up to the top, and then back down again. So it just gives us sort of a bit of a crisscross effect of all the, all the different lights. And then for the sort of tinsel around the tree, I'm just going to use some pipe cleaners. I haven't cut these down, I just wanted to leave these quite fluffy. And all I'm going to do is start winding those around just the same as I've done with the lights. And then join them together and continue around. Uh, once I get down to the bottom, I'm going to do another row of the same wire as well. But I'm just going to go around the other direction so it sort of crisscrosses it around. And then just for the decorations, all I'm just doing is something really simple, is just some different coloured beads. And I'm just going to use some hot glue to glue those into place. And then just for some additional decoration, I just felt like it was still a little bit bare. I'm just using some blue coloured pipe cleaners and I'm just going to twist these around into almost like a bauble shape and just cut a little length off of them so that I can uh, sort of poke them into the tree and just uh, give a little bit more decoration that is just going to bulk out the tree just a little bit. And there we have it, there's our tree. Okay, so to begin the actual building, I'm going to start by creating the bay window. So this is the bottom part of the bay window, and what I'm going to use is a mixture of mat board, foam board, and balsa wood. So those are the three materials that I'm going to be using in this project. And I've just cut the angle of the foam board, just so that I get a nice seam, basically. <laughs> for the angle and then I've just created this really quick little jig which is uh, cutting the be the correct angle out of another piece of foam board and then just using some pins some hobby pins to actually pin everything into place so that when the glue dries I know that the angle is absolutely correct on both sides and the bottom part of it is uh, just a piece of foam board as well. So for the door, all I'm going to be using is a bit of mat board and a bit of balsa wood. And then for the main wall of the actual house, I'm just going to use some foam board. So to create the door, all I'm going to do is actually build that on top of the foam board. Um, and just really 
use that as the foundation so the door doesn't open, it's just fixed and it's only one side. So first off I'm going to glue the doorstep into the project and just using my 123 block just to make sure that it's nice and square and stays square which is cool. And then building the frame I'm going to use some balsa wood which is about three millimeters thick and just creating some a couple of little decorative pieces in the corner there. And then for the door I'm just going to use some matte board which is about one millimeter thick. So just to give that differentiation between the actual door frame and then the door itself. For the actual door panels I'm actually using some ice block sticks or yeah I think they're just wide ice block sticks and just using my little saw and mitre box just cutting these down just so I know that they're really square using a bit of sandpaper and just um, beveling the edges of those panels and then that's the door So to continue on building out the window now that the glue has dried on the bottom pieces I'm just going to create the windowsill using a bit of balsa wood and then I've also got a little bit of trim and I'm just going to cut that down again with my miter saw and get that to fit around the bottom just to add in a little bit of a decorative touch. So moving on to the windows, these are uh, again going to be mainly out of balsa wood and then I'll actually reinforce them with some matte board. So I'm going to just start by cutting out some thin strips of balsa wood and then I'm going to use my gluing jig which I have recently got which I'm very excited about. So I'm just going to use my gluing jig to actually glue everything together and then just let that dry so at least I know everything is square and everything is it will, it's just going to fit together perfectly. So to fit the windows together I'm just going to bevel the edges just ever so slightly so that the angles come together quite nicely otherwise your two right angled corners coming together just don't really work that well. So then I can start by cutting out the section of the main wall in order to fit the bay window which is where the Christmas tree is going to go. So I'm just using a couple of pieces of paper just to secure the bottom of the bay window in place and then I'm just going to set that aside to dry. So with the windows I'm just going to cut out some pieces of matte board. So I'm just going to cut out the middle piece and then a, basically a frame and that's going to sit in behind the pieces of balsa wood to actually reinforce them but also to add in some additional detail into the windows. So to help secure the windows in place I'm adding a piece of matte board at the very top of the bay window just so that it gives the uh, actual window frame something to sit against and then I know that they're all lined up and they're going to fit together. So one of the things that I did find is that while I just needed some time for the glue to dry I just used a pin through the balsa wood which is very soft anyway just to hold them in place. Moving on to the exterior cladding I'm actually going to do some weatherboards and I've just got an empty packet, uh, it was a crackers packet so the cardboard that is on that or a cereal packet, any of that type of cardboard I'm going to use and then I'm just going to cut some strips and these are approximately I think it's about a centimeter wide and then I'm just going to start gluing those into place. And then before I can go on any further I have to put the window into place in order so I can get the siding to go up the side of the window.
And one last thing to do on the actual building part of it is to create the roof. So again, I've just cut a piece of mat board to roughly a little bit larger than the actual top of the window and then just cut some additional pieces of mat board to create the actual structure for the roof. So for the covering of the roof, I'm actually going to create some shingles and I'm using again a piece of the same thickness of cardboard that I've used for the siding and just cut in a little strips of them and then ever so slightly nicked off each of the corners in order to give a shingle effect. And now just moving on to the painting. So the first layer is a coat of white paint and Mod Podge just to seal it all together. At this point I was going to paint it all up really nice and pretty. And then once I'd painted it up I decided that that's not what I wanted to do at all. And so I will be going through and creating a little bit more of an aged exterior. Not necessarily abandoned but definitely an aged exterior. And then with the sparkly new Christmas lights on the inside will just give you that real sort of juxtaposition of the project. Then the second coat is a layer of brown and then I basically let that dry overnight. Um, so with the Mod Podge and a couple of layers of paint, it's really starting to lock everything in together, which actually means that as I come in with the paint the next day, there's less likely that the project will start to warp because anything with cardboard or paper and you put moisture anywhere near it, the first thing it wants to do is to buckle out of shape. So the next day is painting and this gave me the opportunity actually to think overnight what the colour scheme of the building I wanted to go with. So all the siding is going to be a really light grey and actually the paints that I'm using for the exterior are all matte finish so they're not going to give any type of sheen which is going to add to the weathered look of the project. What I'm going to do is just dry brush over a coat and then I'm going to go back in with a fine brush just up underneath where all the siding is because it's less likely where the paint would have worn away. For the shingles I wanted to um, add this blue, I was debating whether to go blue or black, I went with blue in the end, very happy with the choice and I'm just going to layer up the paint and then just wipe off any of the excess with my finger um, in order to show through the brown underneath which is sort of almost a bit like it's a painted wood and the paint's just worn away and there's, the wood is sort of showing through underneath it. So that was the idea behind that. For all of the trim work and round the door frame I'm just using an antique white and really just dry brushing that on top of the brown and just making sure that I leave some of the brown showing through as if the paint has actually worn away. For the door I wanted to have a red door and the reason why I wanted the red was that it would contrast against the green and really add to the Christmas vibe. So that was always going to be the intention was to have a red door. And so I'm just working my way, just dry brushing over the top. And then I'm just going to take a really fine brush and just add in a lot more paint in between the details around the panelling. Um, because again, that's less likely where the paint would have worn away. Um, and then I'm just going to take a little bit of sandpaper and I'm just going to very lightly sort of scuff up any of the really raised edges and this just adds a lot more character to the door. And then to finish off the paint effect all I'm going over here is a black wash 
and just into some of those really corners where dirt and dust and grime would actually settle and this actually adds a lot more dimension to the actual finished paint job as well and you know just anything that was really super bright by the time I got through this part of it I just knock that back with a couple of layers of the wash as well So for the windows what I'm going to do is use my Cricut machine and I've created a bit of a template. All it is is just using different shapes and the cutting tool. So this is going to be the frames and the mullions for the windows and then for the actual glass itself I'm just going to use some packaging material. This is actually quite heavy duty packaging material and just actually put that straight onto the packaging. That's all I basically do. Just cut them out, transfer it on and that's the windows. So once that's all done, all I'm going to do is just trim them down to size and then glue them into place. So now it's time to kind of bring the whole project together and what I'm doing here is adding the actual main wall of the building onto its base. The base is basically a piece of foam board covered with some black cardstock. And then to fit the Christmas tree into place all I've done is poked a hole in the bottom of the flooring and pushed the Christmas tree through. Then I'm just going to add the wreath and a couple of pictures in the background. The actual back of the wall, I didn't really want anything too decorative. I really wanted the Christmas tree to shine. So these little plants are just some that I've had in stock. They are really plastic and they are really shiny. If I had more time, I'd actually repaint them and paint them with different greens in order to make them look a little bit more realistic. So just to uh, knock back the real brassiness of this frame, I just wanted to add a little bit more, a little bit of silver. So I'm just adding the silver and then knocking that back a little bit with my finger, and then I also go back over it with a really light touch of, um, I think it's bronze, just to kind of add another metallic dimension into the mix. It's something that I kind of like to do with metallics, especially, well actually any of them, because often metallics are made up of multiple different colours. So I was really happy with this. And then just to seal it, all I did was give it a spray of a matte sealer. And then one last detail, all I'm going to do is cover up the white edges of the foam board so that if they do show underneath the frame, it's all black and it can't really be seen. So I'm really happy with how this has turned out. And I just wanted to take a wee moment to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This will be my last video until about mid-January. And until next year, I'll see you then. Bye for now.